Welcome to this week's EMBN show. We've got a pack show coming up this week. We are talking about super light and some super ugly bikes. Super ugly bikes, nice. Can't wait for that one. Plus all your usual stuff. We've got the bike vault, plus where in the world. Nice. Well, Neil, good to see you. Both of us in the set. Makes a change. Cheers, Chris. Let's talk about <laughs> e-bikes. In fact, let's talk about quite a special looking new uh, Trek bike. You've seen this? It's yeah. like their cross-country bike. Yeah, so it's the E-Caliber. So it's their cross-country, you know, super fast, normal mountain bike. But this time it's got a motor and a battery in it. And this thing, super light, isn't it? I think the weight of it. It's kind of unusual. Mm. I, th I saw, we saw this bike, I think it was Yol uh, Yolanda Neff race last year. It was kind of under wraps. They had like a, because right. the, the shocks in that funny position, it was all mm -hmm. wraps up, just couldn't see what's going on. Yeah. So what, this bike is 15 and a half kilograms, mm -hmm. only 60 mil of travel. It's yes. a proper sort of epic machine, this. That is super short travel. I don't know if there's, many bikes that are sub 100 mil travel. I don't know, you know, mountain bikes is more obviously what you are more into. Is there many bikes that are well, sub no. 100 mil? That would trek when it came yeah. out, like I said last year, was kind of unusual. It's that linkage less, whatever yeah. you want to call it, design. Mm -hmm. So relying on the flex of the back end, cool. keeping it. Mm -hmm. Almost like an old tool, uh, old school soft tail, but not. It's got yep. a shock on there, so it's proper rear travel. Yeah, no pivot, super lightweight. And that was ridden with a lot of success last mm. year in the cross-country race circuit. But now it's an e-bike as well. And I see yep. it's for the top end one. It's almost £12,000 as well, so pretty pricey. Yeah, pretty pricey. We've got their budget version. Well, I say the budget, the cheap base model is £7,750. But this bike is pretty loaded with kit. It's got the Fazua Evasion motor and battery on there, meaning that it is essentially two bikes in one. So you can whip out that motor and battery out of the down tube and just ride it as a, a normal caliber, not the E version, which I think is pretty attractive. Uh, it'd be interesting to know what the weight is actually without mm. that stuff on there. But yeah, yes. uh, definitely sort of thinking outside the box for a big company like Trek, I mm. think. Yeah, definitely I think a bit it's unusual. Great with that bike as well. 70 kilometers range with the battery in there, but they say with the battery removed, it's pretty similar, you know, version to the standard caliber. But the great thing about that for Zua Motor is that you can tweak it via the Black Pepper app, meaning you can change all the settings in there as well. And it's pretty much uh, drag free above that limiter. So you can absolutely shred cross country on but it. You've but you've got to say, I think that is actually a good looking bike. Whereas Chris, I can see what's coming mm -hmm. up next. <laughs> you know, I told you there's some ugly ones coming. Beauty's I told you. in the eye of the beholder, but holy smokes, come on. <laughs> so this is the M55 Bicycles Bicep Edition. Now, Bicep. I've seen a few of these floating around on the, in on the internet and I always thought, oh my God, it looks pretty, I don't know, weird, interesting. I don't know, necessarily ugly. What's your thoughts? Wow, I'm not gonna go as far as saying that, but you know, <laughs> some I, you can never account for what other people like. Mm -hmm. But at least it's cheap. Cheap, $38,000 this one, isn't it? <laughs> and you have a choice of, Sw Sw how do you say, Swarovski crystals. Oh, wow. <laughs> so you can get that on there, you can get carbon side panels, or in fact, oh, this one man. is actually airbrushed. I thought this was like um, yeah. some fancy tech going on, but this is actually a paint job on the side panels to make it look like something off of Terminator or something. But, but um, yeah, that's that. It's fully charged UK is on their Instagram. It says, very happy to sold another one. They've sold over 10 of these bikes. So people obviously out there, like the look of these things and are happy to spend, what, what 28,000 pounds. And can you guess where it gets the bicep name from now? From that, yeah, terrible looking arm. <laughs> arm on the front fork. But I think it's fairly cool. There's some interesting stuff going on. Like you've got a CNC main frame on there. Seat post is a bit weird, isn't it? So it's a fixed seat post, yeah. like out of a chunk of CNC aluminium that it slides into. What about this bull taco moving on? <laughs> I am not, I'm kind of on the fence. This kind of looks like a little tweak here and there. Mm. This could be a good looking machine, but it's not quite as it stands, but it's nice. interesting looking bike. It's the that. battery, I think, that kind of Looks like a makes, jerry can. It, it does look like a huge jerry can on an adventure bike, but again, it's one of those sort of motocross sort of crossover e-bikes. It has got pedals, but it has got a huge motor on there, meaning that it is essentially an electric motorbike, but fun, possibly in the right places. You know, if you've got permission, private land, etc. Yeah. Pretty good, but it's again- It's more reasonably priced. It's yeah. 3,800 pounds this time. But what about this one then? So this is pretty mean and black. This is the Trefecta DRT. 
Wow. Again, big money, nearly $30,000. Yeah, striking. What it says here, you've got uh, electric gear shifting on the roll off hub. Yeah. Uh, big brakes. It's got uh, it's pedelec mode. Mm -hmm. It's got regen braking. Yeah. I've not heard of that on an e bike. So that's pretty cool. So when you're braking, it obviously puts energy back into the battery. But the problem is on a regular e mountain bike, there's so much drag in that system yeah, yeah. that it takes away the benefit for ha having it. But I think if we can incorporate that into e bikes that we ride, I think it'd be pretty cool, but yeah, you've got a big motor on there to take away all that. Single-sided swing arm. There's mm -hmm. definitely a bit of a sort of motorbike influence there. Definitely. It? But that's pretty cool. Uh, and lastly, check this one out. Now, I've seen this a lot on social media. Uh, I see lots of sort of Italian models riding this around mm -hmm. in the streets in so their, uh, you know, proper fashionable clothing. <laughs> Kind of definitely unusual looking bike. I like quite like the look of those big fat slicks. I bet like in the right spot that could be a lot of fun. I do like the look of that, and I do like the look of those big twin discs up front. 380 millimeter rotors, twin That's 380 mil with four pot calipers at each side. So you've got some crazy braking going on on the front. What's that fork? What do you call those? Is it a lead-in link fork? Like a lead-in link fork. Again, it's all CNC sort of uh, mainframe on there, mixed with carbon as well. Um, again, it has got pedals, but I think that's just a get out clause. I think it's basically got a throttle on it, so you can just twist and go on that. But, um, well, what are you thinking? If you had to choose one between the, the Trekkie caliber and the, that Motor Perilla? Motor what? Perilla Carbon? I don't know. <laughs> I, want, I want to have a go on the Motor Perilla Carbon. That does look cool for cruising around the streets in the right places, but I think my heart has to say the Trek E Calibre. What are oh. you thinking? Oh, I mean, uh, the Trek. So I'd actually really like to try that. I'd like yeah, to go on cool, an epic ride on a bike like that. It'd be really interesting to get out into the wilderness on a bike yeah. that can really, you know, is capable, but also got that power to get you there as well. Yeah, definitely. Let us know what you think down in the comments box down below. Which one would you like to take for a ride around your local loop? Right, time for a little bit of news then. What's been going on, Neil? Well, Saracen, the British brand, have actually launched a full range of bikes. They've got these new aerials, uh, non e-bikes and plus. They've got the aerial E50, all the same silhouette, different amount of travel on the non e-bikes. Uh, but this e-bike is the E50, 150 mil travel. Uh, good range, actually, got three different models. They're going direct as well, Saracen. So decent prices on these bikes. You've got the E50, which is the base model, alloy frame. It's got the E7000 motor, or when you step up to the next levels, they come with the EP8 motor. Nice, it's a good looking bike, isn't it? I think each level, I think Saracen has been really clever with the spec on these bikes and really delivered on the price points. Again, as you mentioned, they're going direct sales, so they're not going to be available in shops. It's all going to be done online. And I think that way they're, you know, they're offering some pretty good um, bikes for the money. I mean, yeah. that base model, you know, it's coming in at £4,500, uh, which Looking at the spec list, it's pretty loaded, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 5,300 mm. uh, euros. Yeah, Mazaki Bomber up front, Maxi tyres, uh, Shimano groups. I can't actually see what group today is on there, mm -hmm. but yeah, interesting to dig into the details a bit more of that range of bikes. Definitely. And racing, I hear there's some news going on on EWSE, right? Yes, so the very first round of 2021, which we're all looking forward to, is in Valberg, France, 19th of June. Uh, it takes on the infamous grey dirt of that area. Um, we're going to talk about some riders in a second, but you can get involved with this as well. There's the E50 and E100. All the entries are open now, so you can get involved. E50, basically you do 50% of the pros course. E100, you do the full course, uh, just an amateur race. So you can really get involved, see some of the best trails out there. Nice. And movement, we've got some riders moving and some exciting new riders joining the EWS series, haven't we? Yeah. A Alex well, Foyle? Yeah, Alex Foyle, who won that uh, World Cup downhill in Lourdes 2017, uh, announced his retirement from downhill racing last year, and he will be there on a Husqvarna. So, really interested to see what happens in pro EWS e racing. We've also got Josh Carlson, who's been, who retired from EWS last year. Um, so, he'll be there riding his e bike, hopefully. Uh, he's from uh, an EWS, so an enduro background. So it'd be interesting to see who comes to the top of EWS e riding, whether it's you know the sort of enduro riders or downhill down riders. Rise. Who you got your money on, Neil? I know you're a racing man. Um, I really don't know. You've got people like last year. You had Nicholas Vrios, who's super fast. But I think Josh Carlson will be a danger man. Definitely, he's super fit, very experienced rider. So yeah. can't wait to get out to them. I think me and Steve are heading out to those. You guys are heading Absolutely. out as well, aren't you? Yeah, so yeah, it should wait. be a good time.
Uh, Chris, you shot a hot topic last week, the de-restricted versus restricted bike. Uh, as we knew, the sort of comments would kick off for this one. Yeah. Interesting to see some of them. Uh, Mark Cossens says the EU stroke UK limit is too slow. The US one is perfect. What do you think about that? Definitely, I think, so that's 20 miles per hour, uh, 32 kilometers per hour. I think that is bang on for e-bikes. I think yeah. there's a petition actually going on to actually try and raise that here in Europe and the UK. Um, I don't know, obviously you ride e-bikes, what do you I think about I feel like it? the only limit really with me, and I have ridden both actually, restricted and restricted, but the old, I rode the old Bosch motor, yeah. um, and it was, the, the only time it would catch me out was for bigger jumps, when you yeah. just want to go a tiny bit quicker, and it, it feels like half a mile an hour sometimes over the limit, and the old Bosch motor would really the generation make three, hard yeah, work, yeah. whereas mm -hmm. you don't get that so much with new ones. No, I I think it was definitely, as you say, more of an issue on those older school motors, but like the EPA, the new Yamaha, the new Bosch, they're all a lot more less restrictive, it's I think. A, it's a really difficult subject. I mm -hmm. think it's great to have the new ones as well, definitely. so it is easier. But you know, anything with, with a motor involved, people will always want to, you know, it's like having a phone and hacking your phone. People exactly. always want, want to more. take a limit off, and people do with cars, all sorts of things. Exactly. So. It's like my boy on his switch when he plays that too much, he wants to take the time limit off. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, another comment here from JRS UK says, come on, de-restriction isn't about riding a trail park. Ride 10 miles there, 10 miles back, and tell me it doesn't make much difference. The speed limit really should be higher, maybe 20 miles per hour, and then it would stop most people de-restricting their bikes. What do you think to that, Neil? I mean, I think that is probably right. Like I say, some people will always want to do it, but I think you're right. I think that 20 miles per hour limit would yeah. be nice, I think, for most most people would, would Yeah, and I, I agree with your comment there. Obviously, riding on the road, um, it is an absolute drag. I, I do agree, but I think if you are riding, it's like saying a Land Rover isn't great, a big off-road Land Rover when you take it down the motorway. It's designed for a job, isn't it? And its yeah. primary use is to be ridden off-road, not chugging down the road. Yeah, it's not like you're gonna do strict your bike and stick a, a 50 tooth chain on it because, you know, that, like I say, it's not gonna help out on the no, trails. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, Paul Sutcliffe says, de restriction smooths the ride. It doesn't suddenly feel like riding through treacle when you hit 25K per hour, so. Yeah, so similar kind of thing really, isn't it? Again, I think those newer school motors, you don't really feel it as much. And at the end of the day, it's a good workout as well, isn't it? It you know? would be interesting to go to a trailhead and actually see how many people have de-restricted yeah. their bikes to to see how many people... I know that I think the big thing is people don't want to ruin their warranty and that mm. would be number one reason not to do it. Yeah, definitely. I think, yeah, and it's, it's the... You know, I had quite a few comments I read through them, especially on Instagram as well. It's actually what an e-bike is when it comes out from the manufacturers. They take on all the legalities of it. If you de-restrict your bike, you're actually creating your own style of bike and it do you know you get what i mean you're almost yeah. like making your own electric motorcycle and it's your responsibility it feels you know? like it's not a problem until mm. it is a problem exactly. where you have a crash mm -hmm. and something happens and then yeah. people want to look at your bike and yeah. then it's a problem so. exactly so <laughs> but happy. good comments love hearing them don't forget to get involved after every video down in the comments below love to re uh, read all them and uh, chat about it in the show Right, it's time for Tech of the Week, and we've got an interesting entry in this week, Neil. It's actually from Neil. Not me, different Neil. <laughs> uh, this drawing is amazing. I, is, I love the look of this. Um, so he's picked a load of the best bits from other bikes mm -hmm. and tried to make his own sort of mule e-bike. Mm -hmm. And it looks, I think it looks actually really interesting. So starting off at the back, because that makes sense, uh, but it's the Milliard, you know, uh, Alan Milliard, mm -hmm. who makes his own motorbikes these days. Back in the day, he built his very own uh, downhill mountain bike. Uh, with an incredible sort of one single swing arm on the side. And a moto kind of influence. Yeah, it? it had a, was it a shaft drive or a belt drive inside the swing arm? Belt so drive, I think, no yeah. Train, yeah. yeah. But actually, so this Neil has drawn this, but he's also put a belt drive connected to a roll-off speed hub. It's got the Shimano EP8 motor, yeah. the external battery. You've got that old Commissar Supreme through shock through the sort of um, seat tube. Just nice and simple sort of, isn't it? it Structure, looks so cool. cycle works, front end. Actually, talking about, <laughs> we're talking about ugly bikes before, I remember seeing that structured bike at the uh, Sea Otter a couple of years back now, and thinking, not necessarily ugly, but a really mad looking bike compared to what was out there. And I had a push on the fork, and I could not believe how good it felt. It was really? Like, it, it felt like it didn't start, it just moved like, right. effortlessly. So, yeah. I'd be really interested to try one out. Yeah, Definitely. you get a funny sort of link on the front of the bike as well. So, so there's no dive on that, they're saying. So when you compress into yeah, it, it doesn't dive down. Like yeah, and you've got the shock connecting it to that down tube as well. So, yeah, uh, yeah that bike looks pretty amazing to it does, me. doesn't I it? Think, I like Neil, it. you need to get your, get your um, wallet out, see if you can build one of these. Get a painting on it as well. Yeah. But neat little touch as well. Front brake going through the fork as well. So it's not like hanging out ready to snag on stuff. Yeah. Just loads of cool thinking. And I think it does look 
a great bike as well. So yeah, get a painting on that. Good Love thinking. to see that. Nice. It's time to go out and about all over the world to see where you guys have been riding your e-mountain bikes. Uh, nice. I need to feel like I need to get a fix of seeing the places that aren't just around by me. Uh, this is Elon, who's riding Calero County Park San Jose on his Trek Rail 7. Ch check it out. He says, can't believe the places I can go with my e-bike. Watching the show changed my mind about e-bikes and feel like I've gone from beer to whiskey. Nice. <laughs> a big change there. But look at that sky. It looks super oh, inviting, doesn't it? It looks well good. It is starting to pick up here in the UK. A bit of sun out there made, you know, riding this weekend a lot better than it Absolutely. has been. Absolutely. Trails are slowly drying out. But check this one out. This is Andre. He's got a giant trance uh, oh. E29 out in Slovenia. Super high up. Nanos uh, Mountain, that is. Got, yeah, he's got 1,300 meters of descending. Oh. oh. <laughs> Jealous. How bit more than we got? Be? <laughs> what the best. I love Savina. Yeah, such a good ride around there. Definitely. Uh, right on to Nicola, mm -hmm. who's riding a high bike X Giro 7 in Switzerland in Hunschenschwil. Hunschenschwil. Yeah. Uh, nice picture in the woods and nice sun. Yeah. Nice bit of winter sun poking through the uh, trees there in the background. Nice. Got a bit of racing action going on here. Oh, yeah. This is John. He's riding a Knox bike out in. Keo Itu, mountain east of Thailand. Hi guys, love the show. Just thought right. I'd share my first e-bike enduro race. Uh, I have a Levo in the UK, but hard to ship the battery, so borrowed a XL Knox bike for the day. Looks like you're having an amazing time Whoa, there. Racing in mm. Thailand, oh. sounds good to me. Seems ages ago since I did, well, just even an event, not racing. Yeah. Uh, this is Andy in the Derbyshire Dales. This is around Bakewell in the UK. Um, 3,000 feet of climbing in 22 miles. Not extreme, but enough to flatten a fully charged bike over three and a half hours. Weather's been a little dry, bit drier and warm over the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nice, look at that. Uh, yeah, nice picture. Right, to the bike vault. Let's take a look at some viewers' bikes, Chris. Nice, what we got? First up, we've got Adrian here with a white E180 RS. Out in Canic Chase. You ridden there, Don? Oh, I have. There's some really good stuff. I mean, the the sort of March trails really good, but some really good off-piece trails around Canic Chase. It's quite a big spot, actually. Yeah. So Adrian's saying he's got finally got all of Project Orange done. Got Hope cranks, chainring, Uber bike discs. Uh, yeah, some orange touches. It looks good, actually. Nice. Yeah, he's even got a little GoPro, a little bit of orange going on on his yeah, bars as well. Yeah, that sort of bag bit. mounted to the bottle cage. I've never seen know. that before. Little, like a little dry bag or something. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Nice. What are you thinking? Nice or super nice? I'm thinking that's super nice. Super nice. Quite like the orange bits of that. <laughs> nice. We've got oh. another one here. Whoa, check this out. So this is Craig. He's got a 2021 Santa Cruz Bullet. Uh, really pimped out. Yeah. Uh, got loads of upgrades on there. Looks a nice colour, that, doesn't it? Drasher in Argyle and Butte, Scotland. Mm -hmm. Just picked up new bikes. It's brand spanking. Uh, yeah, it's got a few bits on there. Look at that fork. It's got a sticker on it. That's pretty cool. Matches the rest of the bike. It's cool, isn't it? Berg Tech bits. Mm -hmm. I look, I like the... Uh, Dropper protector as well. Got that inner tube. Little that. Uh, is it a hack or is it looks like a production thing? Uh, don't know, actually. Yeah. See that? It's really cool, isn't it, to protect that so spray off the back wheel? Fancy looking bike, and I always think like the fresh rubber just makes mm. a bike look sweet. Definitely does. So it's got to be. What are you thinking? Another super nice? It's got to be super nice. Sure. <laughs> what have we got next? Uh, this is Will riding his Scott Strike E Ride Nine Ten. This is Newber Forest, Isle of Anglesey. Whoa. Wow, that's cool. Uh, sure, daily it? exercise ride during lockdown, can't wait for it to end so I can get back into the mountains. Yeah, literally, there's Snowdonia in the background. I was going to say, it got some good mountains in the background there. Uh, yeah, I don't know how much riding there is on Anglesey, uh, but it looks like there's a forest there. There's got to be something in there. There's an amazing quarry I went to near Anglesey. Did you? Yeah, um, good surf. I can't remember the name one of it. Of the spots to go surfing. So, really yeah. fancy one with some real cool, like red, orange, and like fancy stone in that. But, it's an yeah. inspiring looking picture. It makes you want to go to the beach more than ride, though. Another me. super nice, I think. <laughs> Check this one out. This is Chris with a specialised Kinevo Expert. He's out in Afan. Yeah. Evening ride on my Todd, just about to hit the Big Dipper and Blue Scar. Yeah, sort of kind of jealous of mm -hmm. people in places yeah, not so far from us, but uh, good places to ride. Yeah. Fancy a bit of that myself on, mm -hmm. a, on an e-bike. Got a, a nice light, man. Triple clamp bike, obviously, Kinevo. Yeah. 
Nice shot, I think, that one. Yeah. All right, what do you think about this one then, Dom? Ooh, David's Merida one, E160, 9000. This is in Fish Falls, Grampians, Victoria, Australia. Out for the first mountain bike riding a new bike. Two cool. freshies this week. Mm -hmm. It does look good, that bike, doesn't it? And I'm loving the look of that spot to ride as well. See that waterfall in the background I'm coming down? some good little uh, rocky sort mm. of uh, climbs to ride around there. Steve Jones territory, that looks like. Yeah. Climbing around all over those rocks. Yeah. But what do you think? I think it's super nice. I think that's super nice. I, I like seeing brand new bikes. <laughs> Definitely. Last entry here. We've got a bike from Gulam. Yeah. Uh, he's got a 2021 Mondraker Crafty Carbon RR out yeah. on the Surrey Hills en route to Barry Knows Best. Barry remember? Knows Best. I'm, I've never ridden it. No, but I've heard about it. That is a fancy looking <laughs> bike. Look at the wheels, kind of those. DT Swiss wheels look quite deep, doesn't it? They do. It makes it look like a smaller, like a 26 inch wheel, doesn't it? SRAM access gear mm -hmm. I see on there, the shifter. Ooh. What are you thinking? What are you thinking? I think that is very posh. I bet that is a good ride. I like it. It's got all the gold bits on there. Kashima. Definitely. Nice. Super. Super nice. And bike of the week, Dom. So we're going to go back through them quickly. I'm um, just quickly had a peek through there. I think no. I've got to go for that Mondraker Crafty Carbon. You like that, that Mondraker? That is a fancy looking bike. Yeah, nice. I think that the Merida 160, that Fish Falls out in Australia, Steve Jones territory. Yeah. What are you thinking? Nah, I think the Mondraker. Mondraker. <laughs> okay, we'll go for the Mondraker. It is a nice shot, I'll give you that. And that is it for this week's show. Don't forget, if you want to send us anything at all here on EMBN to use the upload service, be it for Bike Vault, where in the world, love to see it. Yeah, and get involved in the comments, always read them. If you've seen any more ugly bikes, send us the links. I'd like to see them. Uh, or are they? Are any bikes ugly? Does it matter? Mm. Maybe not. Form over function, function over form, whichever way around it is. Get involved. Cool, see you next week.